Welcome back to another episode of Connie Celica, my 1977 Toyota Celica. Today we are doing the difficult job of plugging the sunroof hole. We might have involved some interesting people like the surgeon and uh, the Russian super spy, who you'll meet shortly. Stay tuned. This is a job that I've been dreading. I went so far as to look for a replacement roof skin because the roof skin actually is sort of joined at the front and rear pillars here and you can like drill out a tack weld and remove the whole roof skin and then put a whole new one in that hasn't been brutalized the way mine has with an aftermarket sunroof. This was a very popular thing in the 70s. They would have done this at the dealership. They're heinous, they're ugly, they leak. I hate everything about it and I'm not a sunroof guy to begin with. So I just want it gone really badly. I couldn't find a good replacement uh, roof skin. So we're going to instead build a plug for it which is not easy to do, especially if you have no skills with forming metal, no skills with fabricating, no skills with welding, but I do know people who can do these things. So we are gonna start by removing this piece of garbage. I set it on fire, except it's glass, so we'll just throw it out. And then we will bring in our, our special guests and um, explain our plan for how to plug this hole. When, uh, when cutting out a sunroof, make sure you always have a piece of pizza in your mouth. Say hi to the people, Ken, they keep asking for you. Hello. What have you been up to? Where have you been hiding? At work. And uh, how about your FD? What's going on with your RX-7? We get that question a lot too. When are we going to see Ken's car again, everybody? Soon, when? I hope. We're going to get uh, finish a few things, get it ready to start. Because uh, hopefully we'll be going to NAM at NB Auto to get it wired up. Look at that. Maybe I was talking out of my butt because it's not as bad as I thought it was. I was in line when I said we uh, stuck it on with like washroom <laughs> grade uh, <laughs> caulking. But it did the job. We really, we put it back in the hole for our track test. I didn't want to do like be ripping at high speed and have like, I don't know, like the wind deforming the roof. Cause you can see how flimsy it is without the sunroof in here. So putting a plug in here will obviously stiffen the hole. But uh, speaking of plugging holes and stiffening holes, I think it's time we move on and uh, introduce you to the Russian super spy and uh, what his plan of attack is here. While we uh, peel cock off here, this is Dimitri everybody. He, uh, He's a contributor to our website. He's written a whole bunch of good tech stories for us. Some of which were on your, your E30 M, or not an M3, it's just an E30, isn't it? Started life as like a 325. It's barely an E30, so 325E, so it's Germany's answer to the US needs for an economical engine. So it's a 2.7 liter in line six. And that, re that revs to 4,500. <laughs> not anymore though. Not anymore. You have done a lot of things to it. You can go to our website and check out some updates. Like what were your, what's your most recent story on the, on the build? Uh, my visit to Mosport last year where uh, I had a flat tire going to turn 8 doing 270 kilometers an hour. Which uh, the car survived, the left front tire didn't. Neither did Defender, so now I'm building huge box flares, all you box flare right. people win. And uh, It looks sick, man. It's such a badass car. It's got like a thousand horsepower. Uh, it's 908 to the wheels, but it's going to end up making more. That'll do. Since you have some experience uh, forming metal, like with the fenders, and you have an English wheel and some other special tools, uh, we figured we'd bring you in here and give us a bit of an education on how to plug this. You, you, your plan, I suppose, is just to start with something that's a similar gauge to the roof? Yeah, because especially when you go to weld it, when it's stuff this thin, it's a pain in the butt to begin with, and if there's dissimilar thicknesses, it makes it even harder. So we'll try to match it up as close as we can. And the roof is fairly flat, but there is a little bit of a curve to it, so we'll... Uh, yeah, maybe more um, this way than this way. Give it a little bit of English wheeling to give it a little bit of a, of a curve, and then we'll roll a flange all around so that it goes underneath the skin. The flange will also give it some stiffness. Okay, we have our piece of sheet metal, which we think is about the same gauge as the roof skin, and as you can see, we just laid it over the hole here, and Dimitri's tracing the underside of it, just to give us a, uh, our basic shape. And as you'll see, we're gonna leave some extra around the edge because as he mentioned, we wanna have that, that lip that tucks in underneath. Yeah. 
Ben is actually a really good artist. He won't admit to it, but... Uh, yeah, I did uh, Dave's Tramp Stamp. Yeah, show him. <laughs> so Dimitri asked for some tin snips and I uh, brought him the red ones and he said, what about the other ones? And I, I didn't even know they were color coded. I just thought it was like manufacturer differences, but these colors actually mean something. Yeah, so the red and the green, uh, they're for right and left-handed, basically. The flat side is going to be the discard side, so this is where the uh, the cutoff part is going to curve away, and the left side is going to stay nice. Ah. So green for left, so the left side is good. Red for right side, right side stays good. Ah. Yellow for universal, sucks red everything. <laughs> for red and green, I don't know if it's handedness, but I'm not the only one to experience this, but for a right-handed person, for some reason, left -handed. these green works better. Work better. So you're gonna go around that way. Yeah, exactly. Okay, what's your magic? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see how the left side is staying nice and yeah. then the right side is it's curling, curling up. up the other side. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our template. You can see the uh, half inch perimeter is left for that little, what do you want to call it? Flange. Rolled edge, flange. flange. Flange is a good word. So we're just basically doing a test fit to see if it fits the hole as well as we want it to. And if we need to add any shape to it. Add shape, right, the curvature. Okay, so uh, I can tell you already the car looks 50% cooler without that horrible glass on top, so. Man, it doesn't need a lot of shape, does it? No, right? Like, it's really close. I think one light pass. It it needs very, a, very yeah. light, yeah. Like, I'm more worried about the English wheel adding too much, so we'll just do a super light pass, just a little bit of a curve. Mm -hmm. First of all, in case you're wondering, we have a tin roof and it's raining outside, so if you're hearing some weird sounds in the background, that's not Dimitri's bowels. <laughs> that is the rain falling. Not just. Not just his bowels. And this is your English wheel. He very kindly disassembled it, brought it here, and reassembled it for us to use. So this is a, a device used to put a, a subtle curve into metal, I suppose. So at the base of it, all it does is stretch metal. So when you're stretching the inside and you're leaving the outside un, untouched, it has to go somewhere. So that's when you get that curve coming in. If uh, you roll all the way to the edge, then you get more of a, more of a consistent shape. So Basically, it's it's a way to smooth out bumps and um, also to give give a panel some shape. That is our finished shape after a bit of an iterative process where we went back and forth and test fitted it on the roof and just put a very subtle amount of curvature in it there that you can probably just make out. And uh, we're comfortable enough now with the overall fit of it that you want to put that flange around the edge. Yep. So you have a fancy uh, flange device here. What is that? What is this flange device called? So it's just a little bead roller and uh, the dies that I have on it, they're flange rolling dies. So. Like they sign. It's gonna give us a demo here by the look of it. Through here. Oh, yeah. Wow. And that then end up a little step. Well. Adds a little stiffness to it and we can mate the car's bodywork on top of the flange so it'll be nice and flush on top. It makes the loading easier as well. piece ready for a test fit in the hole here the uh, I guess it's really just gonna come down to like how well we trace that initial line for fit up isn't it most important is that the depth is right yeah everything else I mean there's gonna be a, a bead of weld draining the two so we can fill any little gap whatever with that. gap is there yeah, yeah we'll, fair enough we'll grind it down all right 
Welcome to my favorite part of the show. Fill in a hole. Nice. That fits up really good on the front edge there. Mm -hmm. There's some tiny gaps at the back, but overall I think that fits remarkably well. Yeah, I think you had an angry gorilla cut out the original hole here. But. <laughs> yes, this was done by some dealership monkey somewhere, but... And so what about the curvature and everything? Is it looking pretty good? Curve looks good. We were talking also maybe add a little bit of reinforcement because even yes. with this thing welded in, it's all pretty floppy. It's, it is. You're going to need a 20 pounds of boom mat to uh, keep the tinning inside of it. Yeah, but maybe a reinforcement bar in there to kind of help it hold its shape a bit. Yep. That's easy to do after the fact. Yep. All right. Well, so what's next? Welding, bro. Pack it in? Yep. All right. Dimitri had to hit the road. He has an election to hack or a government to overthrow. <laughs> maybe a race car to build. In any case, the surgeon is stepping in here because... Uh, I shouldn't be trusted with power tools any more than I have to be. Dimitri did recommend using this uh, type of pad because apparently it doesn't put any heat into the metal and it uh, removes the paint to prep it for welding in a way that uh, you know won't overheat the metal or anything. So uh, it is going to make a mess though. So dust shields going on here. Mm -hmm. This will be a tag team once I get my half. Sure. Pass it Sounds over. good. Let's do it. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, we have removed the paint on the roof here and uh, removed all of the uh, silicone, acetone to clean. I've also acetoned the whole edge around here clean. So I think we have a nice clean mating mm -hmm. surface for welding in a place. We had some debate about whether we should uh, MIG it or TIG it. And uh, we consulted with the Russians and they said to MIG it 100%. So, of course and they would. The Russians love their MIGs. They love their MIGs. There they are, right below us. The MiG's in perfect firing position. He's right on Cougar's tail. sunroof hole and man that was a lot of work but uh, I think we came pretty close to matching the overall shape of the roof you know just depending on what angle you look at from and what light you look at it from you can you can start to talk yourself into it being high or low here and it's not perfect but I think it's actually very close and my hope is that the body shop will be able to just put a light skim coat on it you know take any little high and low points out of it that way and have it look good without having to put a ton of filler into the roof so I think we're there, but I didn't know, really know how far to go with the grinding. I didn't know, we didn't really know how far to go with filling in all the little gaps with the tacks. So we're just gonna let the body shop sort that out because they're the pros, they know what they're doing with this. This is the first time we've ever tried to do this. And you know, we talked about trying to chase every little high or low spot out with a dolly and hammer, but again, we don't really know what we're doing. So we're just gonna leave it, let the pros tell us if we made a mess of this or if it's actually really good, because we're just not that sure. But to my untrained eye, I'm actually really happy with it. So I think considering this was the first effort, I think it turned out really well. So 
you guys can be the judge. I'm sure you'll uh, post harsh comments about it and maybe some encouraging ones too. Anyway, let's jump to the back and see what Ken was up to back there. If you watched the previous episode, you'll recall when we were fitting up that Chrome Smiley that we had two openings here from the patch panel that Ken had fitted up. And that's because the fiberglass Smiley covered that area. So we didn't need to fill those holes. But now that we're going to the cutout style rear bumper, we wanted to fill those holes up, which she's done a very nice job up there. And happy we took care of that before she goes off to paint. And uh, speaking of paint, here's a paint sample. This is a Toyota color that came on the first gen Celicas in Europe. I think it's called Toyota 302, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but uh, that is uh, a very, you know, like a gun metal grayish color, which I really like the tone of. I think it complements the work wheels, the center area of the work wheels really nicely. And I think it'll just be a very clean, subtle look. Some people might even say boring. When I was sharing different color ideas on Instagram, uh, a lot of people were like, oh, the gray is a little boring, but um, I don't know. I think with the right accents, there may be a bit of a livery on it. I think the gray will work really well. So I am leaning in this direction. Not 100% sold on it yet. So there's still hope for you guys who want me to paint it white or orange or some other silly color, but this is the direction I'm leaning in. So uh, let me know if you like that idea or not. And uh, man, I think that's a wrap on this episode, everyone. That was a lot of grinding, a lot of tack welding. A lot of work, frankly, to plug that sunroof, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. It just cleans up the look of the car so much. I really disliked the look of the sunroof, so I'm stoked to have that clean coupe profile coming at you in the future. So next up, there is not a lot left to do, guys. I think we're gonna figure out a way to mount this on some kind of a dolly system so that we don't have to put the suspension back on it and get it down to the body and paint shop, which, spoiler alert, I'm taking it to Street Bandito. They have a YouTube channel and they uh, run a body shop in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And uh, I'm a big fan of their channel. We've met them a few times, like at the Turn 14 open house. Really cool guys. They built like that full carbon 240Z that you may have seen. And uh, I really just like the quality of the work and I like the, how much fun they have doing it. So I'm excited to bring this down there to them. They're gonna paint it for us. We'll do a little bit of a collab with them while we're down there. I'll show you some of their cool projects. And uh, that is all coming up very soon. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And check us out on Patreon too if you want to help me pay for this paint job. That's patreon.com forward slash speed academy. Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica. The Celica. The Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica. The Celicas from Toyota. The Celicas in the garage. The 1982 Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica GTS. Celica. The Toyota Celica. The Toyota Celica. Toyota Celica. Toyota Celica. And Celica.